What's up, YouTube? Poke Primer here. Primer ready to deliver you our team builder for our week number four matchup in the PFL minor league against uh, Toasty Pokemon and the uh, or Toasty Pokemon and Deadpool's Aerodactyl. That's the name of the team. I don't understand it. I think it's different, but it's it's it just it just sounds awkward. Just saying, it sounds awkward. I'm, just, I'm gonna call them Deadpool's Aerodactyls. Let's go with that. Uh, sounds more legit for me, but that that I'm not. Who am I to criticize team names? I guess. But uh, Deadpool's Aerodactyls and uh, their teams they they got a really really dangerous looking team. Uh, they're definitely one of the most threatening opponents that we've faced up to this point. Uh, Toasty currently sits at two and one with a two and one record, so it's definitely a lot more frightening than facing you know three winless teams in a row so definitely um well i can't really consider ulysses a winless team because it was the first week of the season but still i mean that's uh, whatever but still looking at it overall um definitely has uh potential to be a difficult matchup uh for us just just based upon uh team matchup uh, she does have a very decent team matchup against us, which kind of sucks because, you know, that's usually hard to battle back from. But I think we have a good chance to pull it off, uh, honestly. But uh, her team uh, is kind of terrifying. Uh, some, you know, some teams that I've seen so far have some pretty, like, out of the, out of blue, out of the blue picks that I wouldn't really expect to you know, ever be picked up in a draft like this, but her team, not so much. Uh, her team consists of Sableye, Mian Shao, Mega Aerodactyl, Gengar, Fortress, Hydreigon, Electivire, Milotic, Hitmontop, Durant, and Aromatisse. So right off the bat, you just look at that team and you're like, holy hell, how the hell did this squad get built so beautifully? Uh, key things that I like to point out, I want to point out are uh, Sableye is a huge, huge, huge threat to us. Um, that thing definitely can cause us some issues uh, for sure, uh, with the ability to uh, prankster prioritize and uh, burn our Mega Lopunny and burn just about any member of our team and really cripple them with his uh, little prankster shenanigans, uh, taunting things we don't want taunted, etc., etc could cause some serious issues for our squad. Uh, we see the Mega Aerodactyl, which is the fastest mod on her squad, and it outspeeds our entire team naturally without any any issue whatsoever. So that's going to be a huge, 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 huge issue for us to try and overcome, because if I'm being entirely honest, like Mega Aerodactyl is a very, very threatening mod that could potentially uh, be the thing that switches this in Tosi's favor uh, in the matchup, so that's going to be something I have to be really, really careful about, uh, you know, what I switch into Mega Aerodactyl's attacks and, and so on and so forth, so I can handle it appropriately. Uh, um, got, definitely got enough other things to, to worry about, though. She's got two very good spinners in Fortress and uh, Hitmontop. she got a very, very bulky... Uh, Mons in Aromatisse and Milotic. And on top of that, she has uh, one of the, in my opinion, one of the best wall breakers in the uh, draft format in Hydreigon because it can be run both physical and special without any real downside to either one. So definitely Hydreigon is a huge, huge, huge threat we have to deal with uh, as soon as possible in the, in the matchup. Uh, the sooner we kill Hydreigon, the sooner I feel a little bit better. If, if we can take out the Hydreigon and take out the Mega Aerodactyl uh, as quickly as possible, that would make me feel so much more comfortable. And it is extremely loud outside. What is going on? Uh, they're doing the... There's a mix of landscaping going on, garbage trucks picking up the garbage. Jesus Christ. But, um... Yeah, definitely this is one of... This is the scariest matchup we've had to date. So I'm going to have to literally play at the, at the peak of my playing ability to in order to come out on top in this matchup So uh, and, and retain our top spot in the league right now. 
Uh, we're currently sitting at 3-0 with a plus 16 differential, which is utterly insane uh, to start a season off with. So hopefully we can pull out another win and maybe even break into the 20s. If we can pull it off, if we can pull off a big enough win, we can break into the 20s, which would be great. But um, enough about all of that. Our team this week to take on Toasty is going to start with our beautiful, our lovely, the vivacious Mega Low Punny. Chun Li here is gonna is gonna put in as much work as she can. We are running just enough speed to uh, to outspeed uh, Gengar by one point, so we pretty much outspeed her entire team, barring you know Choice Scarfers and uh, you know obviously Mega Aerodactyl. Uh, we're running an adamant nature because you know I, I'm not gonna waste my time with Jolly because you know if something Scarf it's still gonna outspeed us, and if something is that, and, and if, obviously, Mega Aerodactyl comes into play, that's still going to outspeed us regardless. So I'm not really worried about that at this point. I'm more worried about uh, just outspeeding and hitting as hard as possible. Uh, we're running the fake out to guarantee our Mega Evolution. But pretty much this thing is almost guaranteed our lead almost every week, depending on the situation. Uh, honestly, the only way I would not lead with this thing is if there was something that had, like, inner focus or something that could lead against us and kill us. Like say if my if I if I face somebody who has Crobat, uh, I would not lead Mega Low Punny because uh, Inner Focus Crobat would completely counter Mega Low Punny, in its main way of Mega Evolving, in order to outspeed it. So that could be a problem, and I don't want to deal with that. So, uh, but regardless, like this thing's most likely going to lead because it can just literally go out, click Fake Out, and be done with it and be mega evolved and then I can handle whatever's in front of me appropriately. Uh, we're running the power punch high jump kick combo for a very uh, specific reason and that is for that Sableye. Um, Sableye with the, its ability to burn us, if we, are, if we aren't going to be fake outing it, which would be the primary situation if I could get a fake out on it, that'd be great because then even after a, a burn high jump kick still kills it after a fake out. But if I can't do that, I would have to go for a power up punch first. Get to plus one, and then with plus one after a power up punch, I can ki I can still kill the Sableye with a high jump kick if it's m fully physically defensive. So that's that's the reason why that's there. And I mean, if, if I can set up a little bit, that'd be great as well. If I can get a little bit of setup going, that'd be cool. I, I wouldn't mind that. I mean, there's a couple things that could kind of shut my set setup down. Uh, not so not so much set, shut it down. I mean, Hitmontop kind of comes in and like negates it entirely. Aromatis doesn't really. Aromatis is actually like a really good check to this. Uh, and then the uh, Mega Aerodactyl, its ability to outspeed me, just kind of like says no to my setup and just comes in and like aerial aces me and kills me. But um, Power Punch High Jump Kick. That's that's our way of handling the Sableye. And in order to get rid of the burn, I did decide to pack the Heal Bell on my Mega Low Pony. Uh, since I do outspeed the majority of her team, uh, we can easily uh, fire off. If, if we need to switch out, we can come out later on in the matchup and click Heal Bell and uh, fix up our team, including Mega Low Pony, so that we can potentially do some damage to some other things along the way. Hopefully this set works out. Uh, I mean, if this set can take out the Sableye, that would be huge for us, and uh, I sure as hell wouldn't complain about a dead Sableye. In fact, I'm the last person who would ever complain about a dead Sableye. Let's be completely honest, I want the Sableye dead ASAP. So if this thing can do it, if, if Megalopunny literally comes to just this match and just kills the, the Sableye, that's fine. Uh, Mega Low Punny is like decently far ahead when it comes to the MVP race right now. Like, yeah, it's twelve and zero for the MVP race. So, if if this if it only gets one or two kills in this matchup, you know that's fine. Uh, I think overall, uh, Mega Low Punny has the potential to uh, regain all of that momentum in future weeks, uh, so that it can. Uh, truly shine as the MVP of the season. I, I want that to be a thing. So, Mega Low Punny hopefully can uh, 
hopefully can pull through for us in this situation. I think I think she, I think she can. I think she can. But uh, it's enough of that. Next up, we are making a debut this week. Debut number one, actually, uh, of two mons that are debuting finally for the season. And that mon is going to be Pepe Le Pew, the Skun Tank. Pepe Le Pew is rocking an assault vest with aftermath, running near at, running basically max HP, max attack with adamant nature. Poison jab, pursuit, play rough, and flamethrower. Now, flamethrower on an adamant set, you might be wondering, Jeff, what the hell are you doing? What is your mindset here? What is your goal with running flamethrower on an adamant skun tank? Well, my goal there is very simple. Uh, my opponent has two mons that are four times weak to fire. One of which actually dies to flamethrower even if I'm adamant with zero special attack investment whatsoever. Durant dies to flamethrower with this spread still and fortress max specially defensive floor fortress is still two hit KO'd and fortress really can't do any anything big and major to skun tank in return so at that point uh, I don't need to be any other nature in order to beat those two mons with flamethrower I can just throw flamethrower on there uh, as a very surprise move because if she sees that I'm physical she might be able to put you know the fortress in front of me or the Durant in front of me and eat up my hits and that would be a problem so we don't want that so I decided to pack the flamethrower on there for the purpose of uh, handling those two mons the play rough is for the Hydreigon, she might not expect me to be assault vested, and I can eat up pretty much any hit from the Hydreigon and click play rough and blow it away. Pursuit is for a couple of different things, uh, but mainly I want to be able to pursuit trap the Gengar. Uh, I, my, my plan is to pursuit trap Gengar uh, 100%. Uh, I can eat any hit that Gengar wants to throw at me. If Gengar hits the field, which I honestly think Gengar is coming just because of its immense speed. Gengar hits the field, Skun Tank immediately comes in. Skun Tank immediately comes in and clicks Pursuit. And if that Gengar tries to switch, it dies. If it doesn't try to switch, if it tries to do something to Skun Tank in return, we eat it up and we still do about 60 to 70 percent. Either way, either way, Skun Tank beats Gengar, 100 percent. So that's that's awesome. And then we have the Poison Jab because of the Aromatisse. Aromatisse being as uh, bulky as it is and as big of a threat as it is, uh, we needed some form of coverage to handle it somewhere on our team. We needed it here so that we could uh, sorry about that I just had to schedule for classes we need to wake up at like 5.30 in the morning schedule for classes, whoever's idea that was should go to hell but uh yeah, Poison Jab at least gives us some super effective coverage for the Aromatis. It'll do decent damage uh, overall and should uh, allow us to better take care of it uh, with other mons on the team if necessary. Uh, so that's going to be our Skun Tank. Next, we have another debuting member of the squad in Vermilion R. Florges. And Vermilion here is a very interesting set this week. Because we're rocking a physically defensive set, first of all. We're rocking max HP, max defense, bold nature. So we can take as many hits as possible. But we are also running a Babiri Berry. Now, the Babiri Berry is for a very, very specific reason. And that is because an Iron Head from a Durant still KOs us after... Uh, still 100% KOs us even if we're max HP, max defense, bold. So, I'm packing on the Babiri Berry. So, when that thing decides it wants to come at us, we don't have to be afraid. We can take an Iron Head. It'll, only, it'll do a little over half. We can take an Iron Head and click HP Fire. HP Fire will OCO the Durant 100%. At that point, what really stops Flora just on her team? If the Gengar's already been handled by Skun Tank, Skun Tank can come in and handle the, the, the Gengar immediately if it decides to come in. 
that's not a problem. And if Skuntank handles the Gengar, and the Durant is gone, the Fortress is still a thing, but I'm not too worried about Fortress. I would outspeed it and at least still hit it with an HP fire. If it's not especially defensive, it's still going to get 2 AKO'd. And that's if I don't have a Calm Mind set up, because if you, you can see right there, I'm running Calm Mind on my floor just this week as a, a complete and utter destroyer that it can be. What stops this thing? I ask you that. What really, truly stops this thing? Once it gets going. A crit. Maybe. But not much else. Not many things on our team can one-shot floor just once it really gets going. If I start getting up Calm Mines, this thing will literally sit there for days and just click Moonblast or HP Fire and kill something. That's the entire purpose of this set, is to be able to get some Calm Mines up, counter Durant 100%, and then click Moonblast, HP Fire, and Synthesis till the game is over. If I can pull off a floor just sweep, I would, I will scream. I will scream, literal screams of happiness. Like, I, w I, I will be like a giddy schoolgirl at that point. So definitely look forward to the giddy schoolgirlness that will be coming in the near future. I don't need to put that 4 there. I can put the 4 into our special defense. Yeah. That's going to be the final set right there. Like Right like this. I like this. Yeah, this set's going to put in so much work against her team if it works. Uh, I'm really, really excited uh, to test this set out. I'm really, really hyped. I'm, just, I'm, I'm so excited that we actually have Florges because Florges has so much potential that nobody can really... Nobody really pays attention to it. So I'm really, really excited to see uh, what Floor just can do for us this week. The next Mon is the Sacrificial MVP from Week 1, and the guy who hasn't really done much since then, in Thunderous Incarnate. Thunderous Incarnate is back again, once again, try and put in some crazy work against a team and I feel like with this kind of dangerous opponent I think we're going to get a chance to do it we are rocking a move set of Thunderbolt, Thunderwave, Psychic and Hidden Power Ground we are running maximum speed because of that Gengar uh, we need to run max speed with our timid nature so that we can outspeed the Gengar by one point we are running a Life Orb to boost our power we are obviously running the Prankster ability Move set explanation time. We got the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt's gonna do the most damage possible. Uh, I don't. I didn't feel the need to Volt Switch in this matchup. I actually want to pull up my calcs in a separate window. Don't mind me. Don't mind me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just doing some calculating. Thunderous. Let me go ahead and pull that shit up. Pull this shit up. Pull the comparison up. Let me look at this comparison time. It is comparison time. Boom. Alright, so we're going to pull up Milotic. Okay. Standard defensive Milotic. Level 50. Alright, so Volt Switch to Milotic would do 63 to 75%. That's really respectable damage. Really respectable damage. But that leaves Milotic alive to just click cover, and then, you know, what do I do from there? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Thunderbolt does 81 to 97% to a standard Milotic set. That is, I believe, a 56% chance to KO after Stealth Rocks. So if we can get our Stealth Rocks up at some point before the Milotic would come in, all we got to do is click Thunderbolt on it, and it's gone. Pretty much. 
That's how it's going to work. Which is kind of cool that we can do that. Thunderbolt will also hit the Mega Aerodactyl, but I'm not worried about that because Mega Aerodactyl outspeeds us, so... That's kind of a problem. And, uh, yeah. That's, that's kind of a big problem, actually. Yeah, so Thunderous is going to do that. Thunderous is going to do those things with his Thunderbolts. We got the Thunder Wave. If there's a chance in this matchup where if I can A, figure out if the Gengar or the Mega Aerodactyl or the Man Shower is scarfed, I will T-Wave the hell out of it. So definitely, that's uh, that's a thing. Uh, I, I definitely want to T wave the Mega Aerodactyl at some point. If it literally I end up having to sacrifice Thor to do so, I will do it. I am not against it because then I have other things that can come in after that and one shot the Mega Aerodactyl without any real issue. Just take it out, be done. And if I get a full pair on it, that's even better because it can Thunderbolt it and be, make it dead that turn. So that's that's definitely an option. Uh, we do have the Psychic. Psychic is for that Gengar, for that Mian Shao, for the Hitmontop, which I feel like the Hitmontop is more likely to come. I feel like I feel like the Hitmontop is much more likely to come than the uh, than the Mian Shao, but I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. But Psychic will still do ridiculous damage to all three of them, uh, so which is really, really good. And then we have the Hidden Power Ground. Uh, if she does decide to bring Electivire, uh, I wanted to make sure that I had something to handle that. And Electivire would switch into this thing, like, a lot of times. Like, if I put this thing in against my Lodic, Electivire would switch in a thousand percent of the time to try and catch, catch me off guard and get that Motor Drive boost, which would really, really suck. Which would really, really suck. So... Uh, I can't afford that. So if I have the opportunity to do so, I will click the hidden power ground on that on that fucking uh, Electivire. I will click that HP ground, and I will blow it back. I will actually blow back. I want to see how much this does. Electivire. Offensive Electivire. Bump you down to 50, buddy. And let's throw that hidden power ground on there. Hidden power ground is 67 to 30 percent. Say I go for a psychic against the. Uh, say I go for a psychic against the Milotic, you know, just in case predicting a switch. And they go out into the Electivire. HP ground will then be able to KO the Electivire. 100% of the time. No worries. No worrying about low rolls or anything. Because two low rolls on Psychic would not KO the Electivire. Fun fact. Two low rolls would not be able to handle it, but... A low roll on both HV Ground and Psychic KOs. So, no matter what, I have a chance for the Thunderous to beat the... Electivire 100% of the time. So that'll be fantastic for us. And that is going to be our Thor for this week. Next up we have Black Lagoon, our apparently very feared Swampert. Because everyone seems to want to run Magnet Rise against us, so there's, that's, that's definitely a thing. But, uh, I have to look out for that Magnet Rise-ness, because, you know, she might bring something with Magnet Rise to try and trump my Swampert, or even Air Balloon Electivire. That could be a thing. 
that I have to watch out for. That's my main reason for thinking maybe going psychic over HP ground on switch in purposes. Just in case of the air balloon, pop the air balloon and then click the HP ground. You know, something like that. But, uh... Yeah, so this this set is mainly made for the purpose of uh, coming in, eating hits, and setting up stealth routes. The goal for this set is literally just to set up rocks. Honestly, if Swampert just sets rocks and does nothing else the, the entire matchup, that's perfectly fine. That's honestly okay. Even if it has to come in, set up rocks, leave, come in, set up rocks again, leave. I don't care. It'll do what it needs to do. But, uh... Black Lagoon is fully physically defensive. Bold nature. Allows us to eat all the hits we need to eat from things like Mien Shao, Mega Aerodactyl, uh, Fortress, Electivire, etc., etc. We can eat all the hits we need from all of them come in just set up stealth rocks and be good to go we can also come in on scalds from my Lodic, kind of okay because you know, the burn wouldn't matter too much for us because we're not a physical attacker so i mean while it would whittle us down it's still not that big of a deal so that's kind of that's kind of nice to to be able to not worry about that all as much uh we have the scald for the case of where we might be able to actually hit the mega aerodactyl or get a burn on something getting a burn on something is more likely than actually hitting the Mega Aerodactyl with this thing, but uh, still would be kind of cool to, you know, hit the Mega Aerodactyl with it. We have the HP Fire for the Durant and the Fortress, neither of which want to really sit in in front of us. And then we have the Sludge Wave for the Aromatis, just as an alternate way of taking it on. I mean, it's not the best way of handling it, I'm pretty sure it doesn't do all that much. Pretty sure it doesn't do all that much. Pretty sure it does not do all that much. I'm going to go ahead and just throw Sludge Wave on this set right here. Just for the case of finding out. Aromatis. Aromatis. Standard defensive Aromatis. Drop you to 50. Take, it actually takes about 33 to 40% from a sludge wave from us, so that's actually pretty decent. Actually, if it's just a standard defensive aromatis set, it takes about 33 to 40%. If we get a poison on it, that's basically... If we if we get a poison on it, that's basically doing over half ever, almost every time. So, that's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. It's kind of wild. I like the sound of that. So, yeah, it definitely provides us a good option of hitting that thing. So, Romatisse now officially, in my opinion, handled between uh, Black Lagoon and Pepe Le Pew. I think we handle it very nicely. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be our Black Lagoon set. Lastly, we are bringing Boombat, who disappointed me in our week uh, two matchup in not being able to take out a mon that was four times a week to U-turn, even though he was a timid nature and, you know, was not exactly physically offensive, I was still thoroughly disappointed that U-turn was unable to take out the, uh, the Malamar in week two and by, by Boom Bat, so I'm definitely going to try to avoid those scenarios again by just not running U-turn on this thing because it's not necessarily always effective. I'm kidding, I'll probably run U-turn in the future, but not this week. Uh, since I decided this week not to go with the Volt Turn idea, I decided I didn't need a uh, U-Turn on this set. Uh, instead, I am running just enough speed to outspeed Gengar by one point. This way, uh, I will be able to outspeed everything on my opponent's team with my Choice Scarf. Nothing will outspeed me, not even the Mega Aerodactyl, which is great. Draco Meteor does a very hefty amount to the Mega Aerodactyl which is good. Uh, this will also Oko the Hydreigon, which is great as well. 
Uh, we have the flamethrower for the Durant and the Fortress, which uh, I want to kill those things as fast as possible as well, because uh, those things can cause us a lot of issues. We have the Air Slash for the Mian Shao and the Hitmon Top. I debated running Hurricane a little bit. I debated it, but I was like, I can't afford that accuracy. Air Slash does, in fact, Oko the Mian Chao. It, it KOs the Hitmontop, depending on its spread. But uh, at that point, I'm not too worried about it because Hitmontop, you know, it can hit us kind of hard, but not hard enough for us to have to waste a move slot on a 70% accurate move when we could potentially... Uh, go with a much more accurate, uh, more viable uh, much more viable move in uh, Air Slash. Uh, so definitely uh, prefer that. Last move on the set is actually very, very interesting. Uh, last move is going to be Tailwind. Now, this was, this was really, really heavily debated in my mind because I really wasn't sure what kind of fourth move I wanted to throw in here. I didn't want to waste time on a hidden power because I already had coverage for what I needed, would have needed any hidden power for. So, at that point, I kind of was, like, really scratching my head, like, what the hell else could I do with this, with this, uh, Neuvern here? So, I ended up deciding that, uh, Tailwind was a good idea, because there are uh, quite a few very fast threats on my opponent's team. Um, that could cause us a lot of issues. If I were to see a potential to do so later in the game, late game, be a late game situation. If I preserve my Megalopunny the way I want to, which I sure as hell have every intention of doing so, if I can if I can keep my Megalopunny preserved properly, I can most certainly um, I can most certainly come in at some point, click Tailwind uh, in front of something that I know can kill me, and then bring Megalopunny in start firing off power-up punches and high jump kicks everywhere I go and outspeed the entirety of my opponent's team and clean house. I can also do the same thing with Thunders. Thunders can come in, take advantage of that tailwind, and clean house. Overall, I have a couple mons on my team that are definitely able to just come in, take advantage of that tailwind, and run through my opponent's team. Uh, so that definitely provides us a very, very viable option uh, for Boombat as a potential sacrifice for gr bigger and better things to come. So maybe we'll get lucky and be able to pull it off. And if we can pull off a little bit of Tailwind sweepage near the end of the game, that would be fantastic. But uh, that's going to be our Boombat for this week. And that concludes our team builder for... Week 4 of the PFL Minor League. If you guys are hyped to see the Pirate Pilots Lions potentially go 4-0 and oh and break through that uh, plus 20 differential mark that we're so desperately reaching for, please make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, until next time, guys, I'm Poke Primer, signing